Hi, Ron. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Hi, Claire. I'm wondering how you've been adjusting to being back on the ground. Oh, it's been great. It's, uh, you know, it's really been uh, wonderful to get uh, back into to life, uh, life on Earth. So it's, um, it's, it's uh, actually gotten a lot better than I anticipated. Um, you know, we do a... Uh, we work really hard on orbit to, you know, do a lot of the countermeasures that, uh, you know, help us uh, um, be able to, you know, really make that transition as, as smoothly as we can when we get back. Looking back on your trip, is there any highlight that sticks out? <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of highlights. Five and a half months of highlights. Uh, you know, obviously the uh, the visits of the uh, the two space shuttles uh, that came up. Those are those are really, uh, you know. Uh, amazing uh, experiences to have, especially you know being there and uh, watching history uh, as the last space shuttle departed, um, the, spa the, the uh, spacewalks that we did, all the science that we did on, on board, uh, and then just uh, you know being able to share that with uh, you know five other people, um, uh, and at times more than five other people, you know when the shuttles are up there is just a you know a wonderful experience. Yeah, you mentioned being present for the last space shuttle visit. What was that like? Did it sink in just how significant a moment in history that was? Yeah, I think it. I think it did. Um, you know, it. Uh, re, you know, we realized that we were, you know, watching, uh, you know, at the end of a chapter in our in our history and the and the start of a new chapter. And uh, um, you know, it was it was hard not to get emotional. Uh, you know, when we closed the hatch and and said goodbye to our friends, uh, you know, as they as they departed. But um, uh, you know, because we we knew what that meant and. Uh, you know, we thought about all those thousands of people that had worked on the space shuttles and, and had made them fly and, and uh, you know, all the pride that, the, that everybody takes in those vehicles and that mission. Um, you know, it's, it's hard not to get emotional when you, when you think about that. And then to, to be right there watching that uh, unfold was, a, was a, you know, a very, um, very unique experience. I bet. Can you tell me about Fragile Oasis and what prompted that project? Well, well what prompted it was, uh, you know, a, uh, a desire to basically share uh, this view that we have of the planet, to share this experience uh, as best we can with as many people as we can, and uh, um, hopefully to be able to use this orbital perspective, to, to use this view that we have of our planet to inspire people to make a difference. And so um, that was the goal. We're just getting started. I think, uh, I think we've got uh, you know a lot of potential to to do just that um, and you know really what we want to do is we want to bring people along on these missions you know not just as spectators but as fellow crewmates and uh, and to really uh, you know have everybody be a part of, of what we're doing because this is you know really our space program this is not you know uh, our being you know the entire world you know it's uh, it's um, you know our our uh, you know the ability that we have to send humans in space. You know, um, is is an important one, and it's uh, you know we when we do send those those people into space, they are our representatives, uh, and you know I think it's uh, you know just one of the many tools that we have to try and share that as best we can. Were you happy about the kind of response you've been getting from the public? Yeah, it's been it's been uh, wonderful. Um, you know, we've got the, all these new technologies and, you know, social media and, uh, you know, it's doing a lot of things. It's making the world a, a smaller place. It's, it's making people more interconnected. Uh, I think we always were interconnected. It's just people are, are realizing it uh, more now that, you know, what one person does here affects somebody over there. And, uh, um, you know, we can see this firsthand, real time as things are happening. And, uh, you know, I think it's a very, very... Um, uh, effective way to communicate, and it's an, an effective way to, to share experiences. Has, has the experience of being an astronaut changed a lot, do you think, over the last five to ten years as you guys get more and more connected through blogging and Twitter? Yeah, I, I think, you know, from that respect, certainly. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the tools that we have, the ability that we have to communicate, to communicate the, the experience that we're having, to share the experience that we're having, uh, you know, we didn't have those capabilities uh, just a few years ago, even. Um, and so, this is a you know, you know a way for uh, you know us to do that. And for me personally, you know, I always you know it, the experiences seem richer and more enjoyable when I when I can share them with other people. And uh, so that uh, you know, it, it, from from our point of view as well, it, you know, it's always good to be able to sh to share these experiences uh, with as many people as we can. So this week, many people have been following the story of this UARS satellite as it falls back to Earth. And I'm wondering, did you have any space debris scares while you were on orbit? 
Well, um, we did have, uh, there was uh, one incident where we did have a, a, a piece of space junk, if you will, uh, get fairly close to the space station. Um, we knew that it was coming. We had, we had some warning. We had enough warning for us to basically close every hatch on the space station. Uh, and then uh, the two uh, three-person Soyuz crews each got in, into their respective uh, spacecraft, closed the hatch uh, till that debris passed. Um, we didn't have to do any uh, evasive maneuvering. We, we have the capability to do, do, to do that as well. Um, but in this case, we, we chose not to do that. But it's you know something that uh, is a big concern. It's a uh, it's a problem that we are going to have to deal with uh, pretty soon. Uh, we we track all these items um, or as many as we can, um, and uh, you know it's something that we are constantly vigilant for. Yeah. Well, also in recent news, uh, NASA has announced the design for its heavy lift mm -hmm. rocket SLS to mm -hmm. take humans to deep space. And I'm wondering, would you be up for a mission to an asteroid or Mars? Someday? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I th you know, that's, that's wh why we're here. We're here to explore. And, um, you know, I think that's what motivates uh, a lot of people who, who got into this business in the first place, whether they're astronauts or, or, or any of the other hundreds and hundreds of different jobs that we have in the, in the space program is this, uh, you know, this desire to see what's beyond the next hill, to, to uh, you know, explore, to broaden our understanding of our universe. And so, you know, this is a, this is a great next step to, to do just that. Do you have faith we're going to see that within our lifetime? To see uh, humans on an asteroid? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I have faith that we will accomplish whatever we, we set our minds to, whatever we have the will to do. We have the, uh, the technology and we have the uh, ability to do. Uh, we just have to choose to do it and, and go for it, um, whether that's going to Mars, whether that's, uh, you know, uh, creating a lunar outpost, you know, whatever we decide to do, whatever we decide is, uh, is best for the you know, future of our planet, the f future of humanity, I think that we can accomplish anything that we set our mind to. And what do you think about NASA's recent push into being more involved with commercial spaceflight and uh, nurturing these private vehicles that are in development? Have you been following some of those vehicles? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I was on some of those uh, early source selection boards uh, when we first uh, started kicking off this initiative, and I think it's a, it's a very important step. Um, you know, like I said, you know, NASA and the other uh, uh, international space agencies, you know, we are basically charted to explore, to get to go up, you know, further and further to push the envelope. And uh, in order to do that, you know, as, as, as we push farther and farther, we need to turn over some of those other activities to other agencies or other uh, entities like, like commercial space. So turning over uh, low Earth orbit, if you will, to, to commercial sp space uh, uh, companies is, is, a, is a perfect next step. Do you think that the world would be really changed if more and more people had the opportunity to fly into space? I do. I, I really do. I think, uh, I, I think it's very difficult not to be moved uh, when you look at our planet from space uh, and you see you know, how beautiful it is, how fragile it is. Uh, and you, you know, I only speak for myself, but I think a lot of people share this experience is that you, know, you really get this feeling of you know, we've been given a, an incredible gift. And uh, you know, we are very, very fortunate when you see the vastness and, and of space and you see how you know, just utter blackness and then you see this absolutely glowing, beautiful uh, you know, spacecraft that we're all riding through the universe on, the spacecraft we call Earth. And, um, you know, I think it's, um, you know, a very moving uh, experience. And it's, you know, that's one of the reasons why we want to share this experience as much as we can, because I, I think we would have, uh, you know, a lot less problems. Uh, I think uh, some of the challenges that we face would be easy, easily or more easily solved if, uh, you know, everybody had that perspective, and we're trying to share that perspective as best we can. I know that you've been spending a lot of your time when you were on the space station on research. You know, is, is that a big change from past years when most of the station crew time went for maintenance and assembly? Well, it's a big change because, you know, we are complete with construction. And so, uh, you know, this incredible orbiting research facility that you know, basically, you know, for the last decade we've been building an orbit, um, you know, we are now at the point where we can get reap the benefits of, of all that work. Uh, we can get the return on investment. And, uh, you know, in spite of the fact that we've been constructing the space station for the last 10 years, over the last 10 years, we've still managed to do over 600 uh, experiments 
Uh, and you know, right now we are you know, we're breaking record after record of the amount of research that we're conducting on board. And uh, you know, I, I truly believe, you know, after being there and living there and working there, uh, I truly believe that uh, you know, in in the very near future, the entire world is going to realize you know, how critical um, this facility is and when they start to see the amazing breakthroughs and they, they see the results of the research, uh, you know, from everything from new medicines, new materials, uh, new ways to, pr to produce clean energy. The list goes on and on of uh, all the discoveries I think we're going to see from the International Space Station.